All right, <coughs> we are in. We're in New York. Yeah, New York. We are so. IKEA live streaming from New York. This is Virgil, who is the the main attraction <laughs> here today. Uh, we are here because we are going to show you some um, the first, actually the first prototypes of uh, from the collection IKEA is developing together with uh, with Virgil. Uh, we actually had the first live stream session in Elmhult. Uh, we have, I think it's about 60, 16,000 people living in Elmhult and here we have, what is it, 16 millions or something yeah, like that. So it's, it's a big contrast <laughs> being in New York. But it's really great to be here and it's great to, uh, yeah. to meet you here. Yeah, no, New York is a part of the fabric that exactly. made me the person, the designer and the, the thinker that I am. Yeah. So just even having the work that we did in this context sort of gives a different feel and we can learn from it. Exactly. And what we're seeing is not the finished product. No, exactly. It's, it's a milestone in the creative process. That we're we still in the development of it. So what would be really cool if you guys out there would pop some questions uh, when we go inside here to, uh, to show you the first prototypes uh, of the collection. Perfect. And I think we can reveal, the, not the name, we'll do that later, <laughs> but we can actually, s I mean, the, the, the theme of the topic of the collection is to create a design collection for the millennials. Yeah, and I know one of the like main questions that we get online as we're developing is like, is this going to be affordable? Is this going to be available? Mm. And mm. those things are embedded within IKEA and Absolutely. the notion of democratic yeah. design. So yeah. I think we can reveal that. Absolutely. You know. It's going to be affordable. It's going to be within IKEA's uh, price range. So it's, uh, it's for you guys out there who want fantastic design with a unique virtual signature to make your first home. So okay. let, let's go in, right? We're <laughs> like TV guys. <laughs> Maybe we should do this more often. Yeah, Design I think so, and yeah. TV. Design and TV. <laughs> we have our reality what show. What's the name of our show? I don't know. <laughs> Most. Most <laughs> virtual. <laughs> Most in quotes. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. So yeah. You know, yeah. The space is set up in a, a way to sort of touch on some of the main bullet points. Where should we begin? The doorstop? Or yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's, uh, maybe we should just mention a little bit that, um, that we have selected some prototypes for you guys to see. And um, we will uh, talk about the idea behind what, what has been the driving force for Virgil to design this. And, uh, and we would love for you to give your questions and your comments to uh, yeah. wh what we're going to talk about and, and what we're going to show you. So please bring the questions in. Yeah. So we've got, we got one question already, which is coming. It's a big question. Why did you choose to reveal your work in progress? You know, uh, for me, as I was growing up, you know, I'd studied architecture. I was into, you know, music. And I always felt that there was a, a gap between the things that I loved and consumed mm. and who made them, how they made them. So mm. I, it's like a premise that I gave to my design yeah. process in yeah. the beginning. Yeah. It's a powerful tool to educate and to get more people into design and appreciate design mm. if they simply mm. can see the process that mm. we do mm. in our meetings and in our you know, design mm. sessions that mm. gives products that people live with. Mm. And also in the sense that we actually, we think it's important to share uh, what goes into creating a collection and what goes into doing these products because it's not something that happens by itself. There's a lot of, a lot of effort and creativity and a lot of people involved in it. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's, uh, and I think, I, I, I believe in transparency that yeah. you, sh you, you show what you do. It's we live in, world. yeah, exactly, we live in a connected world and we should, we should be proud that we can actually share where we are. Exactly, pan to the right so you can yeah. let them know that there's people at home or the people in the room Everyone in this room contributed to this collection in a way. So, yeah, it's transparent TV. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the door stopped. We had, ac yeah, exactly. I think this, this, was the, this, this was one of the things that we talked a lot about, that yeah. we are all uh, in our daily lives surrounded by what we would call no-name design or anonymous design, these kind of silent, uh, invisible uh, objects that we uh, we use in our daily life, but we don't really notice them. It's a little bit like you. you who notices a doorstep? <laughs> you know, you you long for it when you want you to yeah. to open a door. Open the door. Function. Then everybody starts talking about where the hell is the doorstop? <laughs> or but who designed? You know, it's like exactly. one of these things that is so pure in a way that it doesn't have a designer. No. And I know in the context of now, it's like we're fixated on 
the name equating to this. But mm. when we were stuck in the beginning looking through what we wanted to do, the question, I had this image of an airplane wheel with mm. two chocks or like door stops to stop it. And I just posed the question. I was like, the person who designed the wheel must think he's like God's exactly. gift to yeah. earth. But yeah. the person who designed the door stop is equally as empower, uh, impactful because mm. it can stop a plane in its track. Exactly. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of an everyday icon, yeah. I would say, that you can use in so many different contexts. And here we have used it in a, I would say, quite unexpected way. Yeah. If we, uh, I mean, when you look at this, I mean, it's a very sort of <laughs> generic, simple shape. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, normally you wouldn't have a hole in a doorstop unless you make it by purpose. But we, yeah. you actually wanted the hole in the doorstop. And exactly. uh, I think we can Jump reveal to, yeah. why. <laughs> why is there a hole in the doorstop? Yeah, and then, you know, we happen upon, I would think, you know, one of the biggest design challenges on planet Earth to ask of anyone with an architectural industrial designer mm whatever, it's like design a chair. Mm. It's the same thing, it's like design a t-shirt to a fashion. Mm. It's like if you mm. can distill line, form, shape, function, mm. history. Mm. So just to quickly move ahead, that doorstop is my tool within furniture or objects to mm. sort of be a signature. Yeah. It metaphorically means something. Mm. But when it came to a chair and what I approached, I grew up in a home with these chairs, that, again, anonymous mm. design, mm. but that was like, a, you know, Swedish or Amish ways of constructing mm, chairs, mm. which we've then used as a tool mm. to merge with my aesthetic, the mm. doorstop, mm. and to make a language. Yeah. So that's revealed yeah. here. Yeah. You know, the idea is yeah. that it's a chair with three legs that are uh, equal length, but then this one is taking use of this mythical anonymous design exactly. that I think is a metaphor. Yeah, exactly. Do we have any... You know, the uh, question yeah? the people interested in the, the title, Doorstop Interruption. Tell us about the title and the significance of that, the interruption. Yeah. A lot of what Henrik and I, you know, he's well versed in the history of art that preceded now, and that's what interests me. You know, we're not just on planet Earth designing things no. in thin air. There's generations that led us up to here. So what I'm using this doorstop is sort of an interruption but also building off that lineage, mm. you know, this particular type of construction where it's native to Sweden, mm. me coming and sort of having my signatures of maybe pop art or sort mm. of conceptual mm. art. Mm. But I thought if we could merge that into a mm. chair, then this mm. chair be equals something new. Mm. It equals something different. Yeah, but also, I mean, this kind of interruption is this kind of something unexpected. You wouldn't expect to have a door stop, <laughs> you know, with, kind of with the with the leg. And uh, I think it's also for me. I mean, what we yeah, discussed yeah. is also this kind of that when we do like this, that we put it on a pedestal, we kind of elevate this anonymous design into becoming more like a. a artistic object and yeah, it's yeah. kind of taking something that is normally not considered design value we kind of Place. put this in and interact with the chair and I think also what is good um, worth mentioning with yeah. this chair is that these this chair uh, originally comes from uh, the shaker chair the Amish or the Windsor chair in England and we call it pin stool in Sweden and they come from kind of folk culture or yeah. they don't have a kind of a region where it's it's, it's a designed thing. It came out of necessity of having a chair that was functional, that was uh, lightweight to move around. And then as I see it, what Virgil has done, he's kind of taken the history and uh, the aesthetics and reinterpreted into a more contemporary current design that resonates with uh, yeah, our yeah. times today. That's how I see it. Exactly. And then, you know, it's modern and it's, you know, it's 2018. Mm. So within the way that we're sculpting the lines and how we're trying to evoke a new emotion, mm. those are the minute details that weren't overlooked mm. as well. If you move around, as you were noticing, if mm. you move around the chair, its proportions reveal itself mm. in different ways. And yeah, I mean, you, you have the front, which is how you normally perceive or see a, uh, a chair, but then when you go around, you actually see, you actually reveal the shape and all the angles, so it becomes an interesting chair uh, from all angles. And I think that's uh, that's uh, creates a design value, uh, yeah. which is uh, something that adds this extra dimension to it. Do we have some questions? Yeah, we just have another question. Yeah. So, what this, what about the specific choice of the red in the uh, in the in the doorstop? Yeah, that's important. Like right now, these are prototypes, so. 
what's great about our process, we're showing things, of course they look like fact, we're getting feedback information just by looking at it. In 3D rendering or in Photoshop, mm. I always just saw red. It, you mm. know, it's like, like it, it feels like an interruption in the color. But mm. as we're developing, Henrik knows, and we're sort of waiting for feedback, mm. if I can do it in a transparent material, the yeah. idea would be recycled but, acrylic. Uh, yeah. So that, to me, another thing that I learned from Henrik around the process is one of the oldest connections between the wood broom. is yeah. a broom handle, broom. Yeah. which is just threaded. But that's usually between wood and wood is unseen detail. Mm. So using modern tools, mm. making that an acrylic mm. and having it express mm. the sort of connection would be highlighted in this. But these are all, you, what you see in the final version will tell you exactly. what had to be compromised. I think it's, it's important for you guys out there to know that this is, uh, this is a process. We are in the middle of the product development process and, and there will be alterations and, and things, but we wanted to show you where we are. And uh, as, as Virgil mentioned, it's, it's, it's when we talk about acrylic, acrylic is an oil-based product, and IKEA, we, we work as a, we believe in circularity, that means it needs to be a sustainable material. And if we can do it in recycled acrylic, then we're okay. If we can't, then we don't do it, because we are such a huge company, we have a responsibility for our planet. To, uh, to make sure that we produce it according yeah. to our values about sustainability and democratic design values. People have been, uh, have been sending in questions saying, how, have you, how are you able to take on board the kind of the feedback that you're getting, you know, the live feedback now, the feedback you've had from the past from, from people? Is well, that something you're able to take on board? Like the, yeah. <laughs> We're just being friendly now. When you see our design <laughs> sessions, they can get pretty animated because <laughs> the process, it's in process, yeah. you know, like, we're, we're not done. Like we have no. meetings before and after this yeah. that are rigorous, yeah. you know, they're challenging. It's, these are the first time that I'm seeing like some of the shapes mm. and I'm getting mm. good visual feedback, mm. but that's what most excites us. That's the essence of the project is mm. not just us designing something cool for cool sake. No. No. The function is millennials home. So mm. the process will include us taking mm. this chair to a dorm room, mm. a person's first apartment, mm to see like what can be affected. Mm. I and think I have another mm -hmm. few months until I have to yeah. like stop yeah. and put the pencils yeah. down. And also because I mean, it, it, I, it wouldn't really make sense just to introduce another chair, uh, chair as a kind of a, a replica of something that has alre already been done. I mean, if we want to reinterpret the design history, uh, we, need to, we need to twist it. We need to take it to another level and make it more relevant for, for today which is like, we'll go on quickly, yeah. but that's why you'll see, I'm trying to invest in, in bed and artistic quality and mm. things that you already have. So mm. the chair is elevated because it feels more like an art object than a typical chair that serves its functions with four equal legs. So we just yeah. have one more question. How do you think this collection will impact millennials' lives when it's released in 2019? Well, hopefully in a good way. <laughs> we can only hope and yeah, pray yeah. <laughs> that, it, that you would like it. Well, for one, like, there's a myriad of uh, answers to that question, but for one, I want to bring a sense of pride. Mm. You know, like, we're in this world where, like, look at the positive side of the word hype, right? Like, but when it's applied to a shoe, as you can see here, you know, they're just sneakers, but they come from a halo. And so if you own them, there's a different sense of pride. Mm. Those things are usually left for garments and sneakers. Mm. I want to extend that dialogue to where I come from. Is I learned how to design those things from mm. textbooks about art history and architecture. Mm. So if we can make that same halo effect on a chair, on a, a credenza, or on a rug, or on a display case, then you mm. have a sense of pride in it, and then you're appreciating the design mm. and not in just something that's broke. Mm. You know, like he said to me, he's like, you only notice design when, it's, when your door handle's broke or when your car doesn't work. That's mm. when you sit and dwell on it. And a project mm. of this nature can make design something that's at the forefront of the reason mm. why you purchase mm. it. Absolutely. And it's affordable, yeah. and you can get it, you yeah. know. So this is the, the display cabinet. Uh, Virgil has designed, and I'm really excited about this. I'm going to have this for home <laughs> really test. Yeah. Home testing. <laughs> for home testing. Yeah. Uh, I think it's really nice that you have taken this opportunity also to show that you can actually display 
your favorite sneakers or you can put something that has a personal value for you. And I'm really curious to hear if, if people out there, how they see this, because I think to some extent we have this idea about storing yeah. is something we do behind closed doors. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's not... Uh, it's not something... What I thought is that for myself, the personal narrative is I consume and I consume a lot because what I do is I get stuff and then I put it away. I don't visually remember that I have these art books. I don't visually remember that I have sneakers. Mm. And if they're away, mm. I, that should be something that I put on display. Mm. And so this is a means of sort of like curating your junk drawer or curating the most coveted things. So at least they're stored and they become an art object. Mm. And I think that that would have an impact on our consumption level. Absolutely. So that's where, you know, IKEA, thinking about sustainability, materials, circularity, mm. and then me, my role is to think about what coveted means to design and how can that influence a more sustainable. Mm. So that all together comes together in the premise of the case, but that artistic quality that we mentioned with the doorstop, mm. uh, manifests itself in the door handles here. Yeah, I think it's right, really interesting. I mean, these are all prototypes, so I'm not going to I'm not <laughs> going to slide the doors because then we will then it will uh, it will fall off. <laughs> to be quite honest, it, yeah, yeah, we glued it, it we glued it on yesterday. <laughs> and uh, that's the way it is to work with prototypes. But I think I think I really like the idea that you took the 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 nail. The, the nail. Again, a universal anonymous no-name design and then actually transformed it into a functional and also a sculptural uh, handle mm -hmm. when, I, when I look at it. Yeah. I think that's the kind of also this kind of idea you have that you kind of can take something that is you normally wouldn't s expect yeah. to, to, to have the, the function of a handle. And that in, in, in itself is like it's something important for the people at home when you want to design in these like larger institutions I understand that IKEA already has display cases. They mm. already have a limit. Absolutely. So my, uh, my role is to think of something else that's not in something that they already do and have it be strong enough to be a valid mm. concept. Yeah. So. And often also you could say that handles are something that we tend to put the least attention into when we design things because it's, it's, uh, it's a basic function. You know, it's uh, but when you look back at the art history, you could say we, you go back to the the Baroque time. The handles yeah. were kind of this super show exactly. That was the kind of the expression and the decoration. But this is also kind of a decoration, but in a more also. I think it's a little bit like that we put th because I know how fond you are of industrial design. Yeah. And also the idea of the of the nail, which is kind of has survived from <laughs> ages and still is relevant today. So I think you having this kind of um, connection point, yeah. awareness of where things come from is uh, interesting. For this particular product, we've got a great question yeah. that's come in, which is for, for you, Virgil. Uh, you've got the sneakers in the cabinet, yeah. which triggers the question from someone that's just said, what for you is the biggest differentiation between designing clothes and sneakers and designing furniture? Um, to me, there's no delineation. I ask myself the same question before I start, and that's why. Why does this need to exist? Hmm. You know, in that answer can apply to a bottle or a water bottle. It can apply to a candle, because mm. that's how I start thinking about what my interruption mm. would be. Exactly. And you know, that's what I'm trying to sort of preach about design is that it's wider scope. There's so many professions within design. Mm. If you're, if it's something you find intriguing in one aspect, you can apply that in a rationale mm. rather than applying it specific. Mm. So in a way, I think of them, they, do the, they both do the same thing for me. And from like a practical perspective, Zen Ren asks, how difficult is it for you, Virgil, to balance your time, the precious time, <laughs> between Off-White, Nike, Louis Vuitton, Ikea? It, it's like almost time isn't a factor. It's like I'm compelled to. Mm. I feel that it's the best use of my time is to sort of breed new ideas and share them and build build mm. bridges between them, mm. you know. Mm. I, I dedicate my life to it. So it's all fulfilling. It's mm. not work, mm. you know. Let, can we, uh, I think it would be super nice just to have a look at the, the, the uh, <laughs> uh, it's a prototype, it's a prototype version for yeah, God's yeah. sake. <laughs> my God, we, we love to talk 
tell us a little bit about this rock yeah. that we have here on, on, on the as wall. We, yeah, as we're rounding out, yep. you know, with our selection. It's, uh, for starters, and we'll get into this with speaking about our friends that have joined us to give some real feedback, but it's about the textures that make your space. We've talked about chairs. We're working on a table, of course, but what I thought is about what are these items that add character? Mm. You know, for me, I'm a person that I purchase art, you know, engage in that vein of living amongst mm. design. Mm. But for a young person, I, I knew the time that I couldn't afford quote unquote mm. art, but mm. I wanted something that was a signature and represented. Mm. So immediately that question why is like, why does a rug it's a it's a tapestry. Why mm. does it need to only be on the floor when exactly. you go to Versailles? When you go exactly. to these places, it's, it was never, you know, there were textures on the wall, so it can perform as an art piece. So exactly. this is, you know, my language that I've been developing mm. of questioning objects by using text to sort of reprogram mm. them or recontextualize mm. them. And this one was just a matter of, you know, it's like a red, white, and blue. Mm sort of play, you know, mm. is the rug red or is it blue? Exactly. Or is it, you know, that's it becomes like a trompe oeil, kind Ooh. of a mind trigger. What is it that you see? Exactly, but it's, it's mine yeah. because I've sort of yeah. made a history of using yeah. quotes in this way. But yeah. leaving that aside, that's, mm. that's to my barometer, my own level to sort of produce something has mm. to reach that. What's interesting is the rug that people have seen has been this Persian keep off rug, mm. which I'm really proud of that was a, a different dialogue about sort of a living room with a Persian mm. rug that you weren't mm. supposed to ever go into that room, exactly. et yeah. cetera. But yeah. when I, I have other ideas in that, and this was simply the color play, mm. but Henrik was like, there's these other techniques that you can use that don't apply to the Persian rug, but we thought gave this dimension, which is this is hand shaved. All the letters have been hand shaved. So, that mean, and this is done manually after it's been uh, woven. These fantastic craftsmen people, they, they sit with the scissor and, and, and shape it so you get the exact shape of all the yeah. letters. And I think what is cool about this is also it gives it kind of three-dimensional effect. Yeah. It makes the letters pop up yeah. in, in a way, which is nice. I like the idea that you, th this you talked about, that the Versailles, because I mean, when we, it's also about this kind of that I mean that we uh, that we we live in an age where we have tend to to forget our history, <laughs> you know. And actually, these were, as you said, these were something that people had as a wall piece, as an art piece on the wall. But it was also something to keep the heat because they isolated the walls. Now we use it on the floor. So maybe it's time that we put uh, the carpet on the wall instead and have a have a, a kind yeah. of the, the, the two points of having an artwork and still have something that adds comfort and warmth to your to your living room. There in like, like with IKEA, as you have learned, yeah. it's, not, it's not just thinking about how you're gonna use it. No, like exactly. say you're done moving apartments and you wanna sell it on eBay or Craigslist. Mm. And that's also kind of a circular exactly. circularity. Like that's, you know, super mm. important. And yeah. then like we can close, as we talk about design, something that I wanna mm. communicate that doesn't work on an Instagram post. Or, like people will judge these things from photos but this is a workshop, so we're showing you the decisions that behind the scenes mm, is mm. like it, many people. I even look at, hey, this is a first rate idea. You exactly. know, I came up with this on a laptop yeah, under yeah. pressure. And now you Euro see the star. result and how it works. But we didn't just stop there at the idea. It's no. about this minute detail makes it feel like it's finished or yeah. something too. Like people would think that, oh, it's Ikea, you know, a misconception would be like, it's just, you know, comes off an assembly line and they mm. didn't even like think twice. You can see that mm. it's the most considered high level. Like we're study we're looking at details, we're turning things upside over, you know, what mm. I've learned about this is the design. Don't, exactly. don't look no, at no, the it's macro no, it's and just exactly. say like, oh, it's, it's a blue rug. On the backside, yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, that's, that's, uh, that's what we have time to, yeah. uh, but I think that we have one last thing is that we, we haven't talk, told people what the collection is going to call. It's going to have a Swedish title. <laughs> our collection is all our, everything we do has a Swedish name. It also has a Swedish name. And yeah. I think we have Christina. Yes. So I will ha she will hand you, not me, she will hand you the envelope so you can <laughs> tell people what the title of the collection the will Ikea be. The IKEA Oscars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, let's see. Drum roll, please. So? Makerda. 
Makerat. 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 We tried, you know. I'm trying to learn yeah, French it's, and Swedish yeah, and it's not Danish and Japanese. Yeah. So we'll write it here. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Right. So um, this is uh, this is what we had time for. So, yeah. but I mean, the process continues, and if you want to follow what we're doing, you can uh, stay tuned at IKEA today, and we will meet Virgil again at our Democratic Design Days, which is the seventh of June, and there we will show more new prototypes. Yeah. So the journey is uh, is continuing. Doesn't great stop. Yeah, <laughs> great to have you here. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you, Virtual. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Sweet. <laughs>